Titans are trying to recruit a five-star coach as they begin second interviews this week. We know that Brian Callahan, the Bengals offensive coordinator, will get an in-person second interview. We also know that yesterday afternoon, former Stanford head coach David Shaw received the first in-person interview for the Titans. And in NFL rules, you cannot interview NFL coaches in person until today. David Shaw obviously is not a sitting NFL head coach, so the Titans had the ability to speak with him in person whenever they wanted to, which was yesterday afternoon. Ramon Foster, which candidates do you believe, if you're picking three, not named Brian Callahan, should get a second interview, and this one in person with the Tennessee Titans? In person, um, one on this list can't currently. Uh, two on this list can't currently. Okay. Uh, but my, I'll go three, two, one, and it's probably gonna rub some people the wrong way. But my, my third guy, number three ranking of Bobby Slowick is three. Just offensively for me, I, I know it's the hottest thing to do as a team right now is to look for the new hot shot offensive guy. But honestly, having the conversation we did with Aditi last week about for hiring special team coaches and what that means and what it looked like and what those coaches have also done in the NFL, winning Super Bowls, changed my mind a little bit. And she also said something, too. It's just like, you got to stop going to get what everybody else is doing. Find something outside the realm that fits your team, fits your city, fits your players. So Bobby Sloak is three to me. Two on this list is Mike McDonald, Baltimore's, and number one will be Aaron Glenn for me. I got two defensive guys and one offensive. What sets apart Aaron Glenn from Mike McDonald? What, what sets apart Aaron Glenn from Mike McDonald? The way they built it up, he he was there pouring concrete. He was there figuring out what players is going to fit their mindset. He was there turning in the pit of misery. Uh, I got a group chat with a bunch of my friends. Sinclair Cannon is a big time Lions fan. We had the the group chat named Lions Pit of Misery. It has now changed to Bears Pit of Misery because there's a <laughs> Chicago Bears fan in that group chat. Uh, but watching them build their pit of misery up. And to changing the culture and mindset of the city, what expectations look like. And to be fair, Baltimore has always had good players. Baltimore has always had a great scouting department. Baltimore has always had a reputation of doing good things. And I feel like I ain't calling what Mike McDonald has done there as foolproof because you do have to scheme him up. Um, but the the idea that he could be more successful in Baltimore compared to watching what Aaron Glenn and them have done over the last three years, it's the only reason you get the nod. But I would take either one of them. So in this exercise, we're both coming up with three names of who should get second interviews with the Titans. We did not compare notes on this, but I have the same three names as you. Do you really? (laughs) Bobby Slowick, Aaron Glenn, and Mike McDonald. Mine are going to come in a little bit of a different order. I'm going to go Aaron Glenn third, Mike McDonald second, and Bobby Slowick number one. And I found an old interview in March with Texans offensive coordinator Bobby Slowick that I think is particularly interesting as it pertains to how he built the Houston Texans offense into what it is. And you hear him talk so much of what he wants to do is not fitting his players into his scheme and fitting Nico Collins and Robert Woods and Devin Singletary even with CJ Stroud into what they were doing when he was in San Francisco He talked about how D'Amico Ryans has a clear vision of what he wants the Texans to be on defense and how he wants to match that on offense and play a similar style on the offensive side of the ball. He said in an interview with Sports Radio 610 in Houston back in March, for us at the Texans, it is kind of the whole team. It's not just one specific side of the ball. You know, D'Amico always says swarm. That implies offense also. Everything we want starts with Are we fast and physical and tough? That, again, is when you turn on the tape of our offense. That's what you want to see. That should be the first thing that jumps out at you. He goes on to say, outside of that, a lot of our scheme fits our players. They know exactly what's structured. That's independent of each organization and each unit. But we're always going to work around who we have, and we're going to make sure that what they excel at we put on tape and for them to showcase what they excel at. I don't see Bobby Slowick as being a guy who's going to try to fit players on this roster into something that he can do with Nico Collins 
And a lot of the way you watch Nico Collins play within the structure of that offense is similar to the way the Titans used A.J. Brown. Nico Collins led NFL wide receivers in yards after catch per reception this season. He was fantastic with the ball in his hands and breaking tackles and yards after contact. He's a wrecking ball. I don't see Bobby Slowick coming in as a Titans head coach and trying to make Traylon Burks Nico Collins. You're looking at who can you acquire then in the offseason? Who can you draft that can be your Nico Collins? Or uh, if it's Mike McDonald, who can be your Zay Flowers? Because I watched Zay Flowers specifically play within that Ravens offense. And I think back to this time last year, we're asking ourselves, are these fast receivers too small? Are they not going to be able to withstand the wear and tear of an NFL season? I think all of them have. Oh, they have. Uh, with the exception of maybe Jalen Hyatt. But again, who's, th- Dale, who's throwing maybe. the football to Jalen Hyatt? Yeah. Right, yeah, take Dell. It is the equivalent of Zay Flowers in Houston. Uh, so I think considering the quarterback development and the fact that Bobby Slowick understands fitting players that you have in your cupboard to your scheme and – you're not trying to make a pot of chili with garlic powder. You're, you're, not, you're not trying to make, you know, a, a steak when you only have chicken in the fridge. Right. You, you understand what you what ingredients you have available to you. The, the Mike McDonald thing for me is just simply what you said about Aaron Glenn and the way that it's been built. Mike McDonald only knows the Ravens way. And one thing, I think it was Diana Rossini who put this on Twitter over the weekend. He said, um, to Diana and people within the organization say, when we go to the senior bowl, when we go to the combine, we're looking for Ravens. They're looking for guys who, when they speak, you can hear the organizational DNA of Baltimore before they ever put on a Baltimore hat. Yep. And that is what intrigues me about Mike McDonald. Forget the fact that the Ravens defense finished the season leading the league in points allowed per game, sacks and takeaways. And they're the first team in NFL history to lead all of those categories in one singular season as a defense. The on-field product speaks for itself as it pertains to Mike McDonald, but the roster construction and the organizational success of Baltimore year in and year out and McDonald being raised within that way in his NFL career is very enticing to me. And so for me, great breakdown of that, number one, but for me also, when you speak about the Ravens, and not only just them, but the, the the three teams we spoke of, Ravens, Lions, and Texans, right? And and I think where you're getting from as far as a organizational standpoint as to why there needs to be a separation of power and, and input within reason is because of this. The Ravens had to make a trade to get Roquan Smith to complete your defense. You look at how Detroit has kind of put it together with a bunch of ragtag guys on the defensive side of the ball and built up the defense. Going to get Aiden Hutchinson, right? When you probably could have chose someone else. And I'll be honest, I wasn't sure what Aiden Hutchinson was going to be. I had no idea he was going to be able to do these things this early in his career while honestly having nobody on the other side of that defense that's rushing the way he does, right? But you look at Baltimore and the people that they've – signed and brought in Michael Pierce what he does up the middle but I think when you look at what they've been able to get out of Jadavian Clowney while he's been there Calvin Noy I'm so sick of seeing him just make plays with every team that you can imagine I saw him do it with the Patriots I saw him do it with Miami he's doing it right now with the Ravens just the way you're able to get something out of Calvin Noy Jadavian Clowney you trade for Roquan Smith and again I bring up the conversation about watching the Ravens draft Kyle Phillips. Now, you can call him a can't miss at where they got him, but safeties aren't drafted high. Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton, yeah, yeah. my bad. Yeah. Kyle Hamilton. They're not drafted high anymore. They're not heralded the way they are in college. And they go get an avatar, and I'm calling Kyle Hamilton an avatar because I saw him put a bunch of people to sleep. He's gotten kicked out of games. But you know what he does, Will, to your point, for a guy like Mike McDonnell? He puts a blanket over the rest of the defense. Like, I dare y'all. And he's six foot four. He Safeties a, aren't six foot four. He should be an outside linebacker. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But so, so the point about figuring out the DNA of your team, like, screw what the masses are telling you. Oh, this guy's a can't miss. Yeah, he's a can't miss to four teams in the NFL. But this guy over here is a guy for us. And I think that's where this franchise, this team, the GM, the scouting department, the ownership has to say, Will, whenever they start having conversations with prospects at the Senior Bowl, right, those sit-down meetings, 
can you hear what you want a Titan to be come out of it? And that I, to that point, I'm hoping whether it be Bobby Slork and what you described, he said, from his offense, whether that be Aaron Glenn or whether that be Brian Callahan or whether that be Mike McDonald, we have to start having those conversations about that point that you just made. Right. Do we sound like a Titan to you? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the question that you have to start asking. And it does feel like Amy Adams Trunk wants that to change. Because Mike Vrabel fits perfectly into the DNA of what being a quote-unquote Titan has meant since this team became the Tennessee Titans from the Houston Oilers. Run the football, play good Mm -hmm. defense, cold-weather football. Well, the Titans aren't going to be playing in cold-weather football in 2027. They're going to be playing indoor football. I don't know. We got to figure out how how deep this goes with this this um this need for power on roster control, right. GM status with Vrabel. Because if that was the breakdown, like why, why not the traditional route? Six one five seven three seven one zero four five is our number. More headlines coming up next. Plus your thoughts on our question: Which three coaches should have first priority? in coming back for a second interview with the Tennessee Titans in person this week. We'll talk.